glad you're here for the first time on the show, comedian uh, Shuli Agar. Yeah, isn't it weird? We've known each other for so many years. We've done so many gigs together. I know. It's so annoying. All the, uh, all the staff here, they're like, good morning. Uh, welcome. We're going to have you sit out. I'm like, I've talked to you for seven years, <laughs> asshole. Oh, they, talk to you, they talk to you when you're coming. Have you done any press yet? Any promo for your Yeah, record? a little bit here there, but you know, it's a lot of it is here, so everybody knows me. You, you work here. Like, Let's yeah. not pretend like, oh right. yeah, I'm just coming. I have a pass. You don't need to put me in the don't, system. Don't act like you're doing your job now. Right, yeah. right. You've watched, because you've watched everybody. I I watch, I listen, I follow the, the saga. Right, you know. Yeah. When the shitter loaf is coming up to you and being like, can you get me anything? You're in your head going like, you're just going to fuck it up anyway. I just saw him. I go, well, where you been? I've been looking all over for you. <laughs> he goes, uh, 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 he's just completely frazzled. Yeah, already. No, that's right. Do they make you wait in the lobby? <laughs> yeah. First they had me go to Travis's booth. And uh, that was depressing. And Are then you guys off today or no? Uh, yeah. Oh, there. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it definitely helps. Yeah, what for time sure. do you get here in the morning? Because I, I walk in now that we're well, starting at seven. We're on, you know, Julie's on on Howard Show. He's I, the he's the whack pack whisperer on Howard Show. Is that what you're called? Thank you. That's what I think. I, I mean, that's, that's your main responsibility at this point. I think yeah. at least on the air. He, and uh, he cocksuckers, another one. That's a social <laughs> media <laughs> one, but you know. that's more for the inside fans. Though it's amazing what sticks. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's a great nickname. Yeah. And he's also. Uh, <laughs> Comedian with a double album called Shulogy. Thank you, Sam. Which comes out February 27th. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, I did the same set back to back shows. First show sober, second show hammered. Oh, wow. And did, that's the album. Did they end up uh, similar? Well, see, the, the whole thing for me was I just wanted it to be a legit debate with people as <sighs> to be like, hey, I kind of like this one a little bit better. Not, I didn't want it to be flat out. This one was fucking terrible. Right. And that was my worry about the sober show. And uh, the sober <laughs> show, the sober show ended up going great. And uh, and then the hammered show, when I finally got the courage to listen back to myself, it was great. Like I was like, wow, there's. I think there's a legit debate here. This is bad for you, though. What? Which means? Because a lot of times, you know, it would stop a comedian from becoming a full fledged alcoholic because they right. go, I don't want to go up on stage all fucked up. Right. But if you come off of this experiment. Going, yeah. I'm more com like drunk is better. Yeah, I enjoyed the show more, and now that I'm listening back, it's actually funnier. Yeah, you're fucking done. Well, how about this? A, a one club contacted me. He said we want to book you to do a show after the album comes out, but two shows, one sober, one hammered. And I'm like, oh, you think I'm going to do a Kreischer? You think I'm going to this is your <laughs> thing now? Commit 110 percent to this. <laughs> also, please take your shirt off. Yeah. And, uh, what a creative to thing to do, that. though. What a fucking creative. Th I've, I've seen comedians do everything they, that I've never seen that one one sober and one. Fucked up. I got yeah. the idea from uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, I was a big fan of his for many, many years. And uh, years ago, I remember being in a, in a in a record shop. Google it, guys. They used to sell record them. shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And uh, there were double VHS cassette, two live shows of Stevie Ray Vaughan. And and I looked on the back and I saw the years and I'm like, oh, he was fucking using this year. And right. And I saw the next show and I'm like, oh, he was cleaned up. Yeah. Right. Tell. And I see the set list and I'm like. I wonder which one he did Little Wing better on. You right. You know, like... Which one did he do it better on? The fucked up one. Yeah. 100%. That's like when you, uh, when you look up Elvis on YouTube and it's like, are we Hound Dog era Elvis? Right. Or are we uh, uh, Lonesome Tonight era Elvis? That's the right. one I like with the capes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love them. Yeah. That's so drunk yeah. Elvis. He's Shitter. the best. Shitter Elvis. Yeah. yeah. I oh, like yeah. a teleprompter Elvis. <laughs> yeah. Fucking fried banana and peanut butter shit sandwich. <laughs> Fucking uh, Elvis. I love it. Fat right. Elvis. More. Yeah. Rambling. Shooting. Rambling. rambling. Yeah. Rambling incoherently in between the lyrics. Shooting television sets, Elvis. <laughs> Bobby Darren. He's a Bobby Darren singing and Bobby Darren sounded better than him. That's the rumor, at least. And he blew out his TV with a gun. Fuck this guy. How do you not want to hang out with this dude? Where's and my remote? Oh, there's my 45. <laughs> you go, why is that dude in a jumpsuit and a badge shooting the TV? Isn't that awesome? He would just wear a jumpsuit, a cape. Yeah. Way too small, his fat gut. He just didn't give a fuck. It just gives you an idea how crazy Nixon was. He's like, bring that guy to me. Yeah. I got to meet him. <laughs> hey, did you ever uh, wait outside on, on life for tickets? You just saw him at a record store. Yeah, well, you know, what? funny story, I waited online all night for the second season of Last Comic Standing. I, I, me and a buddy. Oh, to perform. Well, me and a buddy, this is early on in my, com way before I knew everybody that's on that show has a manager and yeah. is booked ahead of time. And that line is just the gag reel. They're just looking for the fucking freaks, sure. right? So we drive from Vegas to LA, me and him sit out on the sidewalk, and I'm in there in a sleeping bag talking to other comics the whole night. The audition comes around. It's like 10, 11 a.m. We've been out there since 2 in the morning. 
But in front of me is a guy in an all white suit, like Fantasy Island, with a wooden <laughs> parrot on his shoulder. And he goes in ahead of me. And I'm going, this guy doesn't have a fucking chance. He goes, I come in. The guy here go, next. I come in. I hear the producers go, we'll see you later tonight. <laughs> and I go, oh my God, he got a call back? Right. I'm like, I'm fucked. If right. they're looking for this guy, right. I, I got no shot. So I go up. The guy goes, go ahead. I go, yeah. So, uh, and I start, and literally 10 seconds in, he goes, uh, what's your outfit about? And I go, I'm sorry. He goes, do you dress up when you go on stage? And I go, I can if you need me to. Well, I'm just wondering what your outfit's about. Your yeah. outfit's about? Yeah. And yeah. I go, it's about sitting on a sidewalk for nine hours to audition for you. Uh -huh. I didn't know I was supposed to dress up. Uh -huh. He goes, never mind. Go ahead. Continue. So I start again. The Which, other, by the way, in that moment, you're done. I'm yeah. done. You're That's finished. It. You're fucked. I'm done. Yeah. I was done when I heard him go, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk and I start again. And the other guy cuts me off and he goes, who are some of your favorite comics growing up? And I just stop and I go, would you like me to tell you what they were wearing when I saw that? <laughs> oh my and God. the first guy goes, next. And I go, thank you. Oh, and that, I was it. Up. that was a, that's a funny line. At least you, you yeah. fired a funny line at him. But there's an issue. You were cranky. But the, you walked in cranky. I walked out of there on cloud nine because I realized at that point, this is what I want to do. Because yeah. there's nothing else I would have sat on a fucking sidewalk for, for than hours. an opportunity to do stand up. Mm. And so I was like, all right, this sucked, but I know this is what I'm doing. When did I see you? Didn't I see you in Vegas with Florentine many years ago? Oh, yeah. What this year was, was that, 2003? This is when he was opening for Dice. You guys were both opening for Dice. At the Stardust, we were doing it with, uh, Jim and I were working with Andrew. I think Harvey Corman and Tim Conway did the early show at the Stardust. And then Dice did the late show, and Jim and I were were opening for him at the time. I was I just started doing stand up, and I was working with Sandy Hackett in Vegas, Buddy Hackett's oh, son, right. and he was the one giving me most of the stage time. I meet Dice with a Dice idol of mine, comedy idol. Day the laughter died. I mean, forget it. Yeah. One of the best comedy albums ever. I, I'm backstage with Jim and and with Florentine, and Dice is holding court back there for about seven to eight minutes. Has yet to address me. Yeah. And at one point in the middle of this rant, he just turns around, looks at me points his finger and goes, who are you? <laughs> and I see both Florentine and Norton just both kind of back up a little bit. And I go, uh, I am, I am Shuli. Uh, I'm a comic. I, uh, where are you a comic? Here? I go, yeah. Who do you work with? Where do you work? I work with Sandy Hackett. Oh, oh buddy's kid? Uh, yeah. Do me a favor. Give Sandy a message for me. Tell him he's a piece of shit. <laughs> Tell him he's always been a piece of shit, and he's never going to be anything like his fucking father was, a fucking legend. You fucking tell him I said that! And I go, uh, okay. And he goes, nah, just tell him I said hi. <laughs> he really is. Was he just he, fucking? With dude, he commits to making you uncomfortable. Right. He really is well, good He made at me it. bomb the first time I opened for him. <laughs> oh, you opened for Dice too? I, I, dude, I was, so, I was plugging this thing for seven weeks on the air, me and Dice in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And I, go, I get out there. I've, I've yet to talk to him. Back. It's five minutes before the show. Uh, uh, John Jameson was on the show. With, brings me back to meet him. Dice goes, how much time are you going to do? I go, whatever you need. He goes, why don't you do like uh, three minutes? <laughs> three? And I go, uh, okay. <laughs> he goes, well, what do you talk about? I go, I don't know, drugs, sex, stuff like that. He goes, nah, 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 do this. Go out there and be like, who is from Canada? <laughs> 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 and then be like, you know, who loves hockey? <laughs> and then be like, who's here to see dice? And then when they're up there, when they're at the fucking top, Talk about the song I'm coming out to. <laughs> and I go, I'm sorry, the, the song you're coming out to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my kid. One's 14, one's 11. They did, the one's on drums, one's on guitar. It's fucking great. Talk about that. For how long? They're like three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so now the tug of war in my head's like, I've been plugging this for months. Sure. D A, like, I don't want to bomb. It's fucking 1,500 people in the theater. Right. I don't want to eat shit in front of them. But at the end of the day, it's Dice's show. Who's your audience, right? Is it the 15,000 people there or is it Andrew? Yeah, it's it's Andrew. It's his show. I get paid the same whether I kill or bomb. Mm -hmm. And this is what he wants. And I've worked with enough comics that just fucking sit back there and say nothing and do nothing. And at least this guy wants to have fun. Yeah. And so what did you do when you got out on stage? I walk out. I go, who hears from Ken? Everyone, <laughs> how about everyone, yeah, asshole? You're in Canada. Who loves hockey? Again, everyone. <laughs> Who's here to see dice? Everyone in attendance right. came to see dice. 
And then I go, well, let me tell you about the song he's coming out <laughs> A song that I haven't even heard. And neither have they. <laughs> and, and within seven seconds of having no jokes about this, <laughs> of course. I just hear from the balcony, get the fuck off the stage! <laughs> and I look at that big clock on the ground, and it's just, it's an eternity. Right. And I, I had no, pun I think one punchline was like, the drummer's 11! <laughs> like, that was a punchline. Right. Because that's I, all you knew. You were bombing. Terribly. <laughs> and it's just because Dice was entertained by it. Is that of right? Of course he was. Oh, you want to talk entertain? I fin it. I go, guys, you've been the best. Thank you so much. You've been the Dice. best. Yeah, I don't even know where I am, much less <laughs> what I'm saying. I walk off stage. He's got his glasses off. He's wiping tears out of his eyes. <laughs> and he looks up at me and he goes, you had him. <laughs> you could have done like six more minutes. You had him. He loved it. Loved it. He enjoyed that. So did you, I mean, all the years you were on the road with him, did you just watch him just commit like that to just fucking with people? To fucking with people. What does he do? Oh, there's one character he'll do. It's called Get Me to the Stage Dice, mm -hmm. where he'll walk in and just to give the promoter a stroke, he pretends he's either drunk or on drugs. <laughs> so you can't. He won't talk to the promoter. He just ha 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 ha, and they'll sit him down. And the promoter's like, "Can he do the show?" And they're like, "I think so." And, and you have to pick him up. Because you guys walk can't him. break. It's part of your no. job. Yeah. So you get me to the stage. Dice is one <laughs> with the promoter. Literally, until he walks out, thinks he's too drunk to do the show. Now, have you ever? And I mean, you were probably on the road with him more than you were, Shirley. But either of you guys, have you ever been in scenarios like how do you determine when? Oh shit! Like he's actually pissed right now, and oh, he's doing a bit. I, like, is there a clear distinction for you? Or? I didn't see him pissed that often. I mean, uh, I, I retweeted something from Joey Coco Diaz last night. It was a picture. It was like I 17 like years ago today. I know. But it was. Uh, it's on my Twitter and his. It's. Uh, it was 17 years ago today. We were at the Stardust, and this guy, RJ, was going to do a show. He was just like a, a fan of Dice's. He was a high roller. Oh, yeah. And that was us in front of the Stardust. There's Happy Face, and there's Dice, and there's me with my dumb sunglasses. And that I guess whatever 17 years ago was, 2000, what are we in? 2002? And I remember that's probably around the time yeah. that we... Uh, but he didn't get pissed very often? No. Because that's what I'd be a he little bit... He was a fun guy. I'd be worried he about really. that, that there'd be that, because there's... People, there are people who have that thing where they're fucking around all the time. Is that but, Kenny? Sorry, is that Kenny behind him? It might be. I, it, you know, and it's it, funny it, because... It doesn't look like Kenny. No. It is tough to tell, for me anyways, when he was serious or when he was not pissed, but when he was just serious about... Like, right, because you get lost... And even times when people get lost in their own bits, like they're doing this thing where they're pretending to be pissed. Yeah. And then somewhere in the mix of it, they actually got pissed, and you're going, oh no, I don't, I don't know if any of us know... What we're doing here anymore? Is this a bit? Is this real life? Is like, it somewhere in between? And especially how long you've been doing this for me, like when I met him and got to work with him, I wasn't a seasoned vet at this. So, right. so whatever comes out of his mouth, I'm taking seriously. Mm. So when he comes to me before the show and goes, don't do nothing on texting or Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even have anything on those, but he, you got it. He got me one night so good. Like I flew into Vegas. I think when he was doing the Venetian. Yeah. And uh, I, I got in the night before Kenny and Happy Face uh, did. They, and they those came, are his guys? Yeah, yeah. Club, Club, Club Kenny, Kenny and, 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 and Mike, Happy Face. Yeah. I think I flew in on, on a Thursday night. We had Friday, Saturday shows. So we're on the phone and they're telling me, look, Dice is not coming in tomorrow. <laughs> because it's, it's his wife's birthday, he's very romantic, he's getting flowers. And they had me convinced that Andrew is such a romantic, he's not coming in. <laughs> and I had to do the I had to do the show. Like you would have to headline. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, just do the show. And Dice is so good at committing. And we right. had on a three-way call, and they had me convinced that I had to do that. It was so fucking enraging, I was panicking. So you're sitting I'm like, I can't do the show! And, then, and Dice was trying one time to get me to change my look, <laughs> to put on tight jeans and a white t-shirt and a leather coat. Oh, I was so embarrassed. I love embarrassing. that so out of it, he thinks the guy that goes, is a romantic. <laughs> but that that is kind of the guy, and I'm sure I pointed that out in the fucking call. But you're sitting there. You would fuck with your heart, and he committed to it so well, you really thought that he meant. At first, you're like, ah, shut up, but then you're like, Jesus Christ, he fucking means it. Yeah. So you have to start piecing together a full hour, because you're used to doing these short sets. I just, I refuse to do it. I'm uh -huh. like, I can't do it. I'm like, he's a fucking legend, and Kenny's like, nobody will care. I'm like, they're gonna care! <laughs> nobody will care. They go to see Dice, and just his opener does the whole, th the whole time. But he still, till this day, when he sees me, he goes, shush yo! He calls me <laughs> For yeah. a, for a, that's just it's endearing. It's nice. I said, I love it. I love it. Really, the man. really nice. Yeah, well, he's a fun guy to travel with, man. I miss those days because they were carefree days. Yeah. Like you don't realize how good you have it. There's no pressure on you to draw. You really sitting here and saying, telling me you don't know what you got till it's gone. 
Is that what you're, that's what you're coming to the table with right now? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, not, we're at. not even that, because back then I have more now than I had then. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it, I don't miss what I quote unquote, it's like the carefree, like the coming up part of it, where you're just the opener. You're not making much money, but you don't, it, he's it's, paying for your flights. It's the experience. Will it's I not get even upgraded? about the money. It's not yeah, the money. No. Will I get upgraded? Won't I get upgraded? We're staying in a fucking five star hotel. Like, I stay in nice hotels. You guys sound like a John Cougar Mellencamp song right now. But you are first fucking Shuli and Diane. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the Jack part. It's a care. little little ditty, mind. <laughs> uh, it's like we get. You know, I remember the first time getting on a flight to go to a gig, middle seat, exit row, and I'm going. I can't believe I don't have to drive to this fucking gig. Yeah. This yeah. is the best. I'm important. Yeah. I'm flying somewhere. Yeah. Sam doesn't understand that because no one's ever taken Sam under his wing. Well, I mean, can you point? Him? No, no, nobody has. Looks no one likes him. Nobody has. But it's, it was fun. Those those carefree days of, of like just being the opener. Right. And you don't give a fuck. I didn't care. I rooted for fucking yeah. empty shows. There never <laughs> were any. But the pressure of his audience, you didn't care. I didn't care if there was a thousand people or eighty. It didn't matter. I mean, there was always full. Yeah, crowds. I mean that's amazing. Oh, that you don't have to worry about the seats. You don't. Have, it's not because it's not your name on the marquee, so it doesn't. Matter. Dude, you were doing 15 minutes, you're bringing him on, you're trying to fuck girls, you're going out with him and Kenny and Happy Face after, like, the, he's the big celebrity, everybody wants to talk to him, no one gives a shit yeah, about you. We're but barnacles, we're just attached to this ship. Just attached That's to this it, ship. Man. So but, much fun. I mean, I get why. Oh, it's great. There are people who just do that, decide to do that for their lives. They're just like, I'm gonna be the hanger-on guy and just stay forever. Which is never, like, it's never this thing where, where we're talking about it now, and it's like when you're young, and when you're just starting out, to be a hanger honor guy that just kind of travels with the big star, that can be really great. Yep. But there's nothing worse than the guy who kind of takes it just too long, and, and you look back. Well, it's the guy wearing the varsity jacket, yeah. and he's been out of high school for Uncle but, Rico. Yeah, you know but I mean? if you guys were like, let's say, opening with another comic, yeah. and like you guys have done what you guys have done now, and you found out that that person was still opening for Dice, it's not like you'd be like, oh, that must still be fun. You'd be like, oh, are you still doing this, man? You don't want to keep doing it right, because it's a comfortable place to be. Yeah. And you get, when you're professionally touring with a bigger, giant act, I get why you'd want to do it, because like, the money can go up. Like, you can make a good money doing that, but it, it's just, you're going to kind of, because the headliner is the headliner. Dice is that You're not going to outshine Dice. Mm -mm. You know, I mean, what, what are you gonna do? Like, he was always very good to me. Like, he always talked me up. He got me an Opie Anthony. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. So it's like those guys hate that man. I know. I don't. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's also you mean, a guy. You mean who, we wouldn't have gotten that fascinating Hornet uh, break if it <laughs> weren't for Dice? That is true. We wouldn't. <laughs> but it's also a guy who, again, enjoys doing. You'd still this. be with Scorch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can only dream. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Scorch. <laughs> yeah, he was so good to me, man. And in those days of opening, those days of. Uh, you just, there were fun days. You know, another guy that was really fun to uh, work with was Howie Mandel. I never worked with Howie. Man, I mean, talk about a guy who loves doing what he does. This just guy. Comedy? Just everything. Because like, he fucks with people all the time, too, right? But his, the opening to his show, yeah. he puts on a video before I go out, and mm -hmm. he goes, uh, this video's going to play for a few minutes. He goes, but, you know, people might be angry by the time you go out there. I go, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Why right? would you do that, then? So it's a video of some guy on Lawrence Welk singing a song, like uh -huh. an old country song, and then they edit it where they splice they loop it, the video, and you don't realize it's looped till about... <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes into the song. <laughs> so this guy's playing, playing the few, and this is in uh, Canada, so it's like 8,000 people. Oh my God. It's massive show. And, Three minutes goes by and he goes to me, he goes, now they're going to start booing. And sure enough, at three minutes, boo, right? <laughs> and he goes, and I'm back here and I'm going, this isn't good, right? And then he goes, he goes, at seven minutes, they're really going to fucking. No. Get. And I go, seven, I go, how long is this? He goes, it's about 12 minutes. <laughs> no. So this thing, <laughs> I am not shitting you. The place is ready to riot at about eight minutes in, right? And and it's it keeps going, and it gets to like ten minutes, and it stops. And there's a little, it's like an old high eight camera, so you see the little stop button appear in the corner of the screen, and the crowd goes nuts. They're like, "Yes, it's over!" Uh -huh. And then the rewind button comes <laughs> up, and they go, "No!" <laughs> <laughs> and then it plays for another thirty seconds, and and then he sends me out. And and what I didn't think about is, it's just the opposite. When I came out, they I could. 
have been dressed as Hitler. They, they would have given me a standing ovation. They were so happy to see you. <laughs> they were so happy that video was over. And and that's I was very funny, man. And that's that's him to a T. Like he kept looking at me that whole weekend, going, "Can you get, can you believe we get paid to do this?" Yeah, and that just for me fun. is everything. Yeah, that's what my mindset's at. What a yeah. what a ballsy thing to do, just to fuck with your audience for twelve minutes to start the show. Was it a good song? <laughs> oh, it, it it was such an earworm fucking song that whole week I had it in my head. <laughs> and it was just and the the edit was so fucking good. It was it was great. That you didn't know it was on a loop for, oh, at first. Oh my god! And I looked all over for that video. <laughs> I wanted. I've been searching since then. That's amazing. <laughs> That's very. Funny. It was brilliant. And then the rewind button. <laughs> oh, but that rewind went. <laughs> You heard 8,000 people like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's going to make me laugh all week. <laughs> I love when you find guys like that that have been in the business for as long as they have and haven't lost sight of this is fun. Just like, being we're, funny. And we're the, goofing yeah. off. Like We get to goof off for a living. I mean, I, I, cause I, you encounter, it, it's so weird. I guess it's not that weird. But you end up encountering way more often people that forget we shouldn't be getting paid to do this. <laughs> right. Like, I've never... Oh, they've reminded me plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> like, I never... Like, I, I'll sit there and people go, oh, how was, how was work today? And I'm like, it was good. Right. And they're like, so you never say it was bad. I'm like, because we're fucking fucking around on the radio for the morning yeah. and then that's the job. That's the, We're done then after that. What's I can't there? come home and put my feet up and go, not today. I got to decompress. Oh, what the fuck, man? This was a tough one. This, this a, was a tough one. Yeah, this is a joy. But you do encounter people, the longer they stay in, that are, like, miserable. And you're like, what on earth? You got to do this for all these years. What on earth could make you happy? They're, they're like the, uh, they're the TSA of their industry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're done, dude. You're done. You're it's burnt awful. out. You don't want to do this. Right. You don't want to be here. I'm not going to thank you for working for free. Right. Because you're right. an idiot. <laughs> right. Why Go would you home. come in to work for free? Go home. Yeah. Is this the, uh, is this the video, Shirley? Oh, I think this is, dude. Okay, let's take a listen. <laughs> the great goof. God damn it, that's gonna make me laugh. It's he played goof. another video in the middle of the show, just him pranking people at a hair salon. And he's fuck. He's just so fucking. He's a funny, funny fucking dude. dude, man. Harry Mandel's the man. Because he's been on TV for so long, hosting game shows. A lot of people just know him as that, and you forget that he's like a hilarious guy. The first special I ever saw was his Chicago special, live from Chicago, where uh, where he was just. I just remember even as a kid going, "This guy's like the way he interacts with the audience. He's so fast. His crowd work yeah. is just." Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It really is incredible. You know, it went back to, uh, uh, we were talking about it before the break. The Trump ski went back to crowd work. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump did uh, one of his, uh, and I was talking to Travis, if he could just stick to doing rallies, <laughs> like only rallies, no meetings, no, not even State of the Union, right. no, not, nothing presidential anymore. Yeah. Just do rallies. I think a lot more people could come together and be like, yeah, but you could see where this is entertainment, right? I mean, like he's just going up in front of people and just smashing everyone. He was saying something. It might have been about Beto O'Rourke. Where, where he was saying, but I forgot. And then you realize it. He goes, "Yeah, the first time I ever ran for public office, I won." His first attempt at public office yeah. was the presidency. Nailed yeah. it. Listen wow. to him smashing Beto O'Rourke <laughs> last night. He's in, by the way. So, but if you want a real Trump was in uh, San Antonio. Okay. Beto decided to do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a rally on at the same time, a, a competing rally. Oh boy! Which you know Donald Trump loves a competition. Sure, yes right? he does. And uh, of course, Beto ran, I believe, for uh, Senate in mm -hmm. Texas and lost. You debated to, to Ted Cruz. Lost to Ted Cruz. Yes, yes. If you remember, Beto O'Rourke is the politician who, um, when what's his name, Alex Jones. <laughs> was doing interviews. He interviewed a pile of shit on yes. the street as if it were Beto He yelled at it. Yes. He said, Beto, Beto. <laughs> He's yelling at the shit. <laughs> he had a follow-up question. He for did. Him. He did. So here's Trump from last night. You see something, go outside. Tens of thousands of people are watching screens outside. <laughs> and we were all challenged by a young man who lost an election to Ted Cruz. <laughs> 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 
not the best credit to start no. with. You know this man, he lost an election to Ted Cruz. You By may remember way. him as Lying Ted, as I used to call him. By the way, Trump destroyed Ted Cruz, too. Oh, That's the best he did. part. Dude, he went up there like fucking Pat Cooper at the end of a roast uh, in those debates. Like, he was just, hey, fuck face, what are you looking at? Yeah. Just everyone. Lying Ted yeah. puts one hand on a Bible, the other hand he's lying with. Like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you remember... Uh, Ted Cruz, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was the politician that Donald Trump implied that his father may have uh, been involved in the Kennedy assassination. Possible. Didn't he talk shit about his wife? Too? Yeah, he did. What right. did he say about his wife? his wife? I don't remember, but that's I, that. You're right because yeah. that's when people were like, "Did he go a step too far?" And Trump was like, "Ah, that, that's I when, that's that's when, when I thought. started pacing." I was like, "No, he didn't." <laughs> yeah, that fucking song is in my head. It's it yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Really yeah. It's awesome. There's I don't mind shining when that song's. I don't mind it in my head. It's a nice background sound. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna stay there all day. Please. All, do you have it too? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Please make it your ringtone and Dude, just I, let it. I want to get the fucking. Uh, I want to get that song. The whole song. See, I know. I'll forget about the it. Moon is but like right around <laughs> two, three p.m. I'll be like, it'll, it'll come back and I'll have to look it up on YouTube to yeah. refresh. Yeah, <laughs> it'll happen with me at a bad time. Like, I'll be trying to maintain an erection and mm -hmm. failing, and I'll hear ba-boom, ba-boom, <laughs> and it will totally By go. Way, kudos to Troy for pulling. I, mean, I gave you nothing. I gave you nothing, and you found the song. That's I gotta give Travis some credit. Yeah. Wow, Trav. Some or all? <laughs> all? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. Who's that, who's that, who's that juxtaposed at Melania? That's Ted Cruz's oh. wife. spouse. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which again, don't you don't want to you don't nobody wants their wife with their picture next to Melania Trump. No, nobody. Let's go back to Trump. And then they said, you know what? Hey, you're supposed to win in order to run. By the way, we, I, we, I, one and one. I'm one for one. Think of it. We're, we had one election. We won. Now we're going to be two for all, and everything's going to be perfect. <laughs> two for two all. For all. Two That's for good two. shit. One for one, two for all. Yes. <laughs> two we, for two. I, I, we. I, we, we, I, I. <laughs> but everyone who says he's stupid, he does do these rallies pretty off the cuff. I mean, that's fucking amazing that he... Yeah. I think they're almost completely off the yeah, cuff. Yeah, I mean, he, might, he may have talking points or a couple things he wants to hit, but you could tell he's just talking. He said one for one, two for all. I don't think he read that off. He that certainly did not. <laughs> <laughs> Ba -boom, ba -boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Trump should start these rallies. But a young man who's got very little going for himself, except he's got a great first name. Talking about Beto again, yeah. He Beto. is. He challenged us. So we have, let's say, 35,000 people tonight, and he has 200 people, 300 people. Not too good. <laughs> <laughs> Not too good. Not too good. These Trump rallies, people just love going. They love him. He's like, they're like, yeah, you're right. He sucks. It's like a fucking. It's it's like a and uh, just some kind of a rally for people who feel like no one. Everything we say, people are telling us is wrong. Everything we say, people are telling us we're racist or telling us we're. He, he, they, people just want. It doesn't have to be Trump. It could be anybody who's just not scolding you. It's fun to talk shit. People are tired of being scolded. That's all it is. And people also like the approach of like being that you know shit kicker of like yeah uh, you yeah. got you got a headlight out. No, I don't. <laughs> now you do. Yeah, you know, now you we do. have Wait the power. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I don't like what you said. Okay. Uh, Right. And that's the end of it. No right. apology, no nothing. <laughs> right, right. He's got about uh, uh, 300 people. Not too good. Right. Not too good. Yeah, bottom, 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 bottom. <laughs> the sun is shining. In fact, it. what I do, mm -hmm. what I would do is I would say that may be the end of his presidential bid. But he did challenge it. So he's already announcing Trump is he's going out of his way to campaign. announce yeah. that Beto O'Rourke's campaign is done. He's it's over. He hasn't even announced he's doing it. It's I'll do over. it for you. Sit down. I got yeah. it. It's over. It's amazing. In, in such a, a fucking shit world as politics, and they're all just kind of undercutting dirtbags. They're like, he plays dirty. It's like, go fuck <laughs> yeah. yourself. You all do. They're the, the, whole, worst. the whole system is covered in dirt. The worst. Right. Fuck, don't, don't get upset because you lost. Don't yeah. get upset because you yeah. found somebody who can beat don't you. Don't fucking whinge about it now. He's better. 
better at it than you are. Right. Sorry, you guys had a system that worked just as well, and this loudmouth billionaire came in, told you your fucking wife is ugly, and your father killed Kennedy, and he won. Right. What Good. are you going to do? That, that's what, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> when he said that statement, that's what I perked up. I'm like, who's that fella? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds interesting. Oh, happy day, boom, boom. <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to get that on fucking Spotify. Did they send you... Uh, <laughs> Did they, Troy, did they send you the clips? Uh, the, uh, the other clips that you have? Yeah, yeah, the clips. Did Rob just send you clips? Let's see here. Sam, you're interrupting. There's nine minutes and 40 <laughs> seconds left of that song. Yeah. Put it back on, please. Ha oh, happy day, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah, then Trump, uh, let's go to the Green New Deal. Because then he went after Ocasio-Cortez. She's a... Uh, Last yes, week... Yes. She is. They introduced a massive government takeover that would destroy our incredible economic gains. They introduced the so-called Green New Deal. <laughs> so-called. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> They're just following suit. <laughs> it sounds like a high school term paper that got a low mark. Why would you have to add? They got like, a low mark. Like, to say it sounds like a high school term paper is already like, that's oh. A, that's insulting. That's yeah. insulting. These are adults. He's like, they got a low mark. A low mark. <laughs> got a D. Not even an F. Not an F. A D. D. Very poor grade. Not a failure. Very poor grade. Then again, he's standing there in an arena packed with people. Yeah. And she's, it's like they, none of them can do what he does. And all, they always have to discount the people. Oh, they're all stupid. They're all racist. They're all nobody can admit he's just better at it than you are. Whether you like him or not, that's he's what, better at it than you are. That's what I'm saying. People need to play to their strengths in this field. He should. He shouldn't even ever be at the White House. He should be doing rallies all the time. That way, never step in that press room. No press conferences. No meetings with Chuck Schumer and Pelosi. No nothing. Just yeah. going in front of an arena full of people and insulting people. And I'll bet his approval rating will go even higher. Yeah. I want my president to go in front of a microphone and go, Can you believe those fucking guys? <laughs> yeah. You know? I do enjoy it. Right. He's Troy, throwing on me. Tell me the truth. Doesn't when he does stuff like this, doesn't it remind you why you find him entertaining? Absolutely. That's what I thought. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Let's go back to him uh, explaining the so-called Green Deal. It would shut down American energy, which I don't think the people in Texas are going to be happy with that. Boo! It would shut down a little thing called air travel. <laughs> How do you take a train to Europe? You know, there's... <laughs> Fair point. Isn't it great that he drops it and then he moves? You know, there's... Just and then he lets everybody he catch up to him. Me, he reminds me of like a host at a, at a comedy show who's just burying the next guy. He's bringing up. Yeah. Like he's not he's not doing him any favors. Right. Yeah, your next comic, uh, a lot of comics have credit. You know, this one, he <laughs> doesn't have any credits, but he's still... Oh, I love when they go, I just met this guy five minutes ago. Yeah. So I don't know anything about him. I'm sure he's a funny guy. Never heard one funny <laughs> thing. But I'm sure he's funny on stage. Wasn't that great backstage? <laughs> but... <laughs> I did yeah. that to Craig Gass years ago on purpose because uh, he... I, we were doing a bunch of the like big shows, killers of comedy shows we used to do with like, the crew of us. And I used to host them all. This one night, I just wanted to do a set. I just wanted to do a spot. That's it. So Craig was the only one that I could really go to to host the show. I said, Craig, can you do me a favor? We're in Chicago. I go, could you, could you host tonight and just let me do a spot on this late show? <sighs> yeah, sorry, man. I've been doing uh, terrestrial radio all week. And uh, a lot of people have been calling asking if I'm uh, doing a spot on this show. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, you want to be but like I could that? have hosted it and been there all night. Yeah. So then I, so then I go up, and I, and I go to bring him up, and I'm like, and we had just gotten it to, uh, to satellite, so I go, you guys like terrestrial radio? They're like, boo! <laughs> I'm like, you know the Steve Dahl show? They're like, boo! And I go, this guy was on it all week. Give it up for Craig Gass. <laughs> <laughs> just had to dig out of that fucking it's hole. perfect. Yeah, yeah. It is nice when you bring the guy on, you can kind of fuck with him a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you guys haven't spoken since? No, we're good I'm friends. Just <laughs> yeah. He goes back into the Green Deal. He's not done pointing out that... Ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom. <laughs> is that Lawrence Welk? Uh, that's from the Lawrence Welk show, yeah. What's his name? Oh, All right, let's get back to it. Oh, we are. We're listening him. to it. He is the best. Yeah, you've lost Jim today. Yeah, Jim's out. I love Larry Hooper. <laughs> I can't help it. Oh, boys, he's back for his noon feeding. Wrong Hooper. Fucking <laughs> 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 fast. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> 
<laughs> this crazy senator from Hawaii. They said, do you like it? Yes, I like it very much. Oh, really? How are we getting to Hawaii on a train? <laughs> Same <laughs> joke. About that Different one, part of the world. About it. She'll figure it out. She'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> this one over here thinks we're going to Hawaii on a train, this idiot. You think right before he goes on, he's looking at a list and he's going, I'll do the Hawaii train thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring that up. Totally. See what, see what I got on it. <laughs> well, I love that he, like, yeah, because he thinks in simple terms. Right. Like, yes. he goes... Uh, like you saw the one woman who's like running for president, but she was uh, giving her press conference on a snowy day. Right. But she's like, global warming is a right. big problem. He's like, right. yeah, geez, global warming is a big problem. Looks like a fucking snowman out there. Right. right. That's well, not how it works. Yeah. You got icicles on your microphone, miss. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Global warming, huh? Seems pretty cold. <laughs> not good. Not Ends good. Two, not two good. Words. Doesn't sound too right. Uh -huh. Not good. Not good. Then. He followed up. He got the three peat in. He decided to tackle the uh, Northam thing, you know, the Virginia yeah. guy. And to his credit, he moved past. He didn't spend a lot of time on the blackface thing. No, he went right to the abortion thing to remind everybody sure. that he made a, a previous error in judgment. But the governor stated that he would even allow a newborn baby to come out into the world. And wrap the baby and make the baby comfortable and then talk to the mother and talk to the father and then execute the baby. Execute the baby. That's probably a little, it's a little paraphrasing. Maybe, yeah. Wrap the baby, make it comfortable, <laughs> yeah. educate it in one of our fine schools, and then kill it on its wedding day. <laughs> I, I love his language. Execute the baby. Yeah. And then execute the baby. We'll offer it a cigarette first, yeah. but then it's dead. That guy wants to kill all the baby. It'd be great if he just literally brought like a vacuum on stage. I just want you to hear what this sounds like. Yeah. Last thing a baby's gonna hear yeah. out of the womb, by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> boo! Yeah. We hate executing babies. We like babies. Don't execute them. Incredible. 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 He's like, you guys get it. Yeah. <laughs> You're my people. You don't want to execute babies either, dude. No! We don't want to execute babies! You mean it's not called an execution clinic? <laughs> Plan I, I'd like to book an execution for yeah, later today. Yeah, yeah I need to, Well, my due date is uh, May 19th, so if we could do the execution on the 23rd, I guess that would work best for everybody. You know what it is? It's the fucking unpredictability of his rallies. Yeah. It's the fact that you just don't know what's going to happen. It's unpredictable. Will he say something angry or crazy? It's it's totally off the cuff. It feels different than anything in politics, and that's why people are going to see him. Because it's like, this is politics, and it doesn't feel like politics, and this is what we were hoping for, something fresh. If any of these other fucking assholes had done anything different than anybody else is doing it, they might have had success he's had. It's yeah, the only reason he caught my attention. How uh, do you beat you the know. guy who's talking about executing babies? Mm. He's talking some guys on TV who's the president, by the way. Yeah. He's talking about executing babies. He's just making shit up. That's an attention guy. I love it. I love yeah. it. Just yeah. using the wrong language oh. however he sees fit. Of course. Right. But he's but this is where Trump is smart. He knows like he knows what's illegal. He knows what's right. lawsuit worthy. He's sure. a genius when it comes to lawsuits. He's never gonna get sued. Or he's never going to lose a lawsuit based on something that he says. He likes to walk right to the edge of that cliff and go, ooh, that's a big drop, and then walk back. Right. Yeah. Like I've, heard. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. Yeah. Right. You probably thought I was going to walk off, didn't you? People have Not said kinda. People, people have, have said, said I didn't say it. People <laughs> said it. <laughs> then he talked about, uh, there were protesters there, though. Oh. Well, let's, and, you know, a lot of times, you see this in these rallies and stuff like that, especially at the colleges and whatnot, people get very shaken by the protesters. I've watched, you've watched people speaking publicly that the protesters definitely win. He doesn't. Well, let's, let's, let's see. Rather than waiting online for five days, for nine days, for three weeks. There they are. <laughs> Where do these people come from? Where do they come from? <laughs> Vaginas? I don't know. I don't know. I doubt it. What? What are you even saying? They go back home to mommy. <laughs> they get punished when they get home. <laughs> and of course, you got 10,000 people in there chanting, build that wall. 
After Trump says the protesters are going back home to get punished by mommy. <laughs> <laughs> that he's not sure where they came from to begin with. I don't know. I don't know. Drop from the sky? Are I don't these know. even human beings? I don't understand it. I don't get it at all. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> by the way, truly, uh, Raw Dog Channel 99 is premiering your new album this Thursday at 10 a.m. And you can get it uh, February 26th at the, uh, oh, that's the release party at the New York, at the, the New York, New York Comedy, Comedy Club. Club. Yeah. And uh, use the promo code Shuli for tickets. Where do you get it? On uh, uh, iTunes? You can get it on iTunes. You can pre-order it on iTunes. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and I have a show this weekend, too, if you don't mind. Sure, that. Pull it on here. Uh, Friday and Saturday at the Franklin Institute in uh, Philly. Uh, I'll be performing both those nights. So you can go to uh, sjp.com for tickets. Now, uh, Julie's a very funny stand-up. Oh, very Thank funny. You, Is Raw Dog premiering both Albums, yeah. So they're playing. They're playing both volumes. Uh, myself and Mike Boschetti, both our albums come out. Uh, are streaming on uh, Valentine's Day. You're in good Rada. company. Yeah, and uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no, that's the name of his album. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. But um, but um, but um, but yeah. Um, yeah. Do you do any materials about the moon shining, or I just talk about how the moon is shining for oh, about I like that thirteen to fourteen <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 13 to 14, yeah. <laughs> Is this stuck in anybody else's head? Oh, yeah. oh it's Travis, too. Well, I just boom, got boom, it out until today. <laughs> yeah, it I'm took, obsessed with this. It took you 13 years. Jim, if you could. I... We'll be back with more Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. Here what happens. And, uh, Let's go with Shuli. Shuli's here. Shuli, <laughs> yeah. you know him uh, from the Stern Show. He's going to be premiering his new album this Thursday at 10 a.m. on Raw Dog Channel 99. Shuliji, it's a double album. Yes. One is a sober set and one is a drunken set. And you can, uh, you can help him go down that uh, spiral that he's on by letting him know that the drunken set is the set that you prefer. Um, we'll see. It's up to you. Let me know which one you like. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's an exciting time. 